said, I'm Helen Moody, and I'm an occupational therapist and ergonomist. And basically, this is one of my uh, special interest areas, being very topical and uh, very much in the news and in multiple workplaces, it's the in thing. And I'm representing both the Human Factors and Ergonomic Society of Australia, of which I'm an active uh, member, and also I work with uh, Corporate Health Group, or CHG, based in Mile End. So that's sort of a bit about my background and my interest area. And I, I did a version of this talk last year at Safe Work Month. I don't know if any of you uh, came along to that. So uh, I was asked to come along here and uh, present the material in a, in a bit of a shortened version and a bit of an updated uh, version of that. And so I guess the basic premise is uh, too much sitting a health hazard or not. Certainly, in the media, there's been a rapid increase in interest about the problems caused by sitting. And what I'm finding is that a lot of the questions that I used to get asked would be to come in and do a workstation assessment for someone and adjust the height of their monitor and fix their, their chair. Now it's, uh, my back hurts, I'd like a sit-stand workstation. And that's probably the crux of nearly everything that I uh, am receiving for workstation assessments. And my answer to that is it's not quite as simple as doing a sit-stand workstation. So I'm hoping to pull all of that together in the information that I've got here so that it gives you a bit of a, a background and an understanding of it. So some bright spark flushed uh, and graphed the in interest via uh, research articles in to sedentary work. And this just shows the range of articles that were produced in recognised journals and other um, mechanisms going back from 1995. And you can see on that that there's you know, not much written about sedentary work and there's been a great increase. In about 2012, and pre that, in 2011, there was this huge spike. And that was associated with that big study that a lot of you would have heard of, done in New South Wales. So in 2012, they looked at 220,000 people in New South Wales, 45 years and older. And that's been one of the definitive research papers that's been done in Australia and I need to consult my notes so I don't tell you the wrong figures here. Uh, what the findings of that study was, was that if uh, this study was par um, published in the Archives of Internal Medicine, if anyone wants to go back and have a look at it, what they did is they found that adults who sat longer for uh, than 11 hours a day, so that's total, that's work, uh, transport, meals, uh, um, TV, the whole lot over your day. So 11 hours a day, they had a 40% increased risk of dying within three years. So this is the 45 and up. So that was a huge figure, and that started ringing the media alarm bells, apart from anything else. And that was compared with people who sat for fewer than four hours a day. People who sat for between eight and 11 hours a day had an increased risk of dying by 15%. And so that study was the, one of the first big Australian studies. There's been lots of uh, European, uh, American studies that have been looking at the same data, but this was the longitudinal one that was sort of a bit of the defining moment in Australia for this. Um, and then what happened is that you started getting these catchy phrases, is sitting the new smoking, uh, public enemy number one. <laughs> I like that one. Um, health hazards of sitting, you know, outlining all the body areas that are going to collapse in a heap if you sit. And then you started getting all of the um, publications that came out, you know, like standing during meetings or I'm looking on the wall over there, the sit less, move more poster that are becoming more and more common. So I think really the media has gone from is it a problem or alerting people to the problem to now saying what can we do about it which is far more useful. And um, I like this pictogram, this is one of my favourites. So that really 
is a version of the old pictogram that everyone knows. And when you think about it, our jobs determine our postures. And here, through the passage of time, you know, we've gone to typewriters, then we went to computers with the large CRT monitors, then we went to flat screens, and you know, I, I've been around a while, I remember the, the when flat screen monitors came in, that was a bit like these stand-up desks, everyone wanted one, and everyone has now got one. So I think that probably what will happen is that this is the evolution of the moving more, standing up more, etc. But where we've sort of evolved to is that in most of the technology we use, it promotes this bent posture and this very sedentary posture. So that's why I particularly like this take uh, on this pictogram. So where to next? Um, the, what happened was that there was the Stand Up Australia uh, had a program of research and that was run through the Baker Institute in Melbourne with the combination of other unis around the country. So the questions were posed, is it feasible for people to do less sitting? And what's the most relevant change? And these things on the, the list here are the really, is where we're up to, I think. What, what is the most important? Is it the total sitting time that you do? Is it uh, sit-to-stand transitions that you need to do during the day? Or is it how much time you actually spend standing up that's beneficial? Uh, is it prolonged sitting bouts that uh, are the problem? You know, are these health problems? Or is it just the accumulated sitting time in the day? So these are the sorts of things that are, are being looked at. And I think that they're really important to our workplaces because what you recommend and what eventually gets put into place is going to be governed by what the actual research findings are on these type of things. So this is the, the Stand Up Australia program of research, if anyone wants to go and have a look at any of this. And this question here in the middle, how much do the organisational and individual elements add to change or can we just install uh, Stand Up workstations? And I, I think a few of you, because um, I recognise a few of you in the room here, and you've probably all come across the people in your workplaces, and probably yourselves included, I just need a very desk. <laughs> it's the, one of the, the common ones. Or I just need the ability to stand at work and that will fix everything. And this study uh, was released in 2015. And the summary of that was that the physical environment is important, but it's a cultural change that actually has to happen to support that. And here's some results. Now, I apologise for the graphics here, because this is how it was given to me. So some of this is hiding behind the, um, those uh, pie charts. So this is Professor David Dunstan. In the end of last year, the International Ergonomics Conference in Melbourne had a whole stream and keynote speakers talking about this very issue. And this study, I think, is an important one. What they did was over a 12-month period, they had a control group. They looked at how much sitting, standing and stepping people do in a day. And this was in a government, a Commonwealth government organisation. The control group that they measured, 76% uh, sitting, at three months, it was around about the same, 74% uh, sitting in the day. So that's no intervention at all. The first experimental group were given a sit-stand desk, and that's all. They weren't given instructions, well, they were told how to use the sit-stand desk, but they weren't given any other input. Their baseline was 78% sitting, 14% standing. At three months, their sitting hadn't really reduced all that much, 72%, standing at 19%. Interestingly enough, at 12 months, not much change, 71% sitting. So just giving someone a sit-stand desk is not necessarily going to change the way that they work or how they undertake their work. This second experimental group had a multifaceted approach. They were given the sit-stand desk, 
They were encouraged by management, by team leaders. Uh, there were some cultural programs like going out for a walk at lunchtime. There was uh, input about general health and nutrition. Uh, they were given uh, periodic uh, access to information about health related things. And this group had a change. So in three months they went from 76% to 50%, but they almost maintained that at 12 months, that they were sitting about half of their time and a combination of standing and moving for the other half of their time at work. So I think this study it has also been replicated in other places, but I think this study clearly shows that it's not just a matter of, of facilitating standing at work by giving uh, hardware that makes you sit or stand. It has to be everything else around it. Um, so, the recommendations that came out of this study, so there's a fair bit of writing on there, but what the guts of it is, is that you need to start off with at least two hours of standing and light activity, which they classified as light walking, progressing to an accumulation of four hours a day. And why they said uh, progressing is that the, this dot point down here, those individuals new to adopting more standing based work could expect some musculoskeletal fatigue, soreness um, as a part of the positive adaptive process. Because you all know it's quite hard standing up. I don't know how many of you would uh, stand at work? A couple of you? Not many of you. That's only a couple out of the whole room. So if you suddenly start standing at work, it's actually hard work to stand. And uh, someone commented too before we started, they said, uh, here we are in a uh, seminar about uh, uh, sitting less and moving more and we're all sitting listening to you. <laughs> That's a very good, uh, good point. So four hours a day. So it's basically half of your time sitting, half of your time standing, but broken up. So not all in one go that sit-stand adjustable workstations are highly recommended. Prolonged standing postures should be avoided. I mean, it's long standing in one spot has long been linked with all other, uh, other sorts of uh, health can problems and conditions. So it's not just the matter of swapping sitting with standing. And that, along with other health promotion goals, so what they listed was improved nutrition, reducing alcohol, smoking, stress, all of the programs that have been around for quite some time, that employers should be promoting that prolonged sitting is not the way to go. So that was all fairly much what you would think. And then the graphics started changing. You know, the, the round figures has been that uh, graphic. Usually it's a, a lady sitting picture perfect at their workstation in the best posture possible at their workstation. This is now morphing into uh, combination postures of sit and stand, so the change is occurring. And I think that there's a couple of things and strategies that are common. There are the personal and the workplace suggestions, and then the second thing is the hardware options. Now, there's a whole collection of them. So things like standing up during meetings, conducting standing meetings, conducting walking meetings, and in fact, why that the walking meetings is underlined, Victoria's put out a publication about how to conduct a walking meeting and some recommendations for it. So it is actually there available on the website. Standing at the back of the room during long presentations, feel free, anyone wants to stand. Um, standing and having a break from your computer every 30 minutes is a recommendation. Walking to a colleague's desk instead of phoning or emailing, standing to greet a visitor, standing during um, phone calls, considering your headset so you can walk around, eating your lunch away from your desk or going for a walk at lunchtime, having standing morning teas for social functions, moving your bin away from your desk, using your stairs. They're all common sense stuff. So I think people know this or generally know this, but people don't necessarily do it. 
So these tips are all good, but they are common sense, and it's more the cultural change that has to happen to, so that people actually do this and feel comfortable doing it. And that has to be a whole workplace promotion, and it has to become a way of work and a way of a person's consideration that it's important to them as a person. The next thing is about what are the hardware options. And this is what people tend to focus on. And I think that the focus has been too much on the hardware options. So I'm going to go through those hardware options because they are part of the picture. And I think that what people need to understand is that each of them have got their pros and their cons and that there's no one product on the market that is going to hit and fit everyone's bill. Maybe apart from the electric height adjustable desk. So I put that at the top of the list. Uh, put that in the manual height adjustable desk at the top of the, of the list uh, because they are probably the most practical and the easiest, but these ones aren't in any order. So they're not in, in my order of preference or anything. So why I see the electric height adjustable desks uh, as useful is that it's practical, it's a push of a button. So you are going to actually move from sit to stand more often. The manual height adjustable desks, uh, some, some of them take about 70 wines to go from sitting to standing, some of them take 100 wines to go from sitting to standing. A few workplaces have said we're not spending an extra $300 per desk to get uh, electric, we're going manual. So my bet would be that not many people would change that manual desk um, past the novelty value of being able to do it. That's just my thoughts on it. The other thing about them is that they can be useful where you've got activity-based work, uh, work environments where you've got a desk that you can go to and it's dedicated for your for standing work so you can easily wind it up or down just to get to your right standing height so that's that's a useful spot for them <coughs> then you've got this list of desktop units and there's probably a, a couple that i've left out of that list but the, these are the most common ones that you'll find in adelaide at least so i'm um, going to go to the next i know some of you are taking down that list and I'm just going to go to the next slide where I've got pictures of all of those. And I should keep an eye on my time too. Okay, so here you've got on the top left, that's the Chiavello Quick Stand. That's a very thin platform, so when it's down on its on at desk level, it doesn't take up much room and it's slimline. It does wobble a little and you've got a fixed distance between the screen and your keyboard so that if you have any visual requirements, it's, uh, it, it's not quite so useful. This is the very desk um, that has probably been the most common one around Adelaide, I'd say. And the very desk uh, has got a fairly simple scissor type mechanism. The downside of all of these is that there is no room for any document work whatsoever. So that while this looks roomy, you cannot have a document platform. It's very difficult to have a document holder. And when it's down, it also takes up a lot of desk space. So it's not, uh, it, it has its downfalls. The other thing with the very desk is that the levers, anyone use a very desk here? Anyone got one? A couple of you? The levers for the very desk are set in a little. So if you have someone with a back injury that's significant, they have to lean forward and pull it up. You can use it with one foot forward, one foot back, and that makes it a little bit easier, but especially if you've got a large one with a couple of screens on top of it, it's quite heavy. This is the Ergotron WorkFit unit. Very similar to the Very Desk. They're all similarly priced. And this has the levers to activate the mechanism at the front, so that's not quite so much of an issue. But it, again, it's, it has its, uh, it's got a large footprint. Uh, they're quite thick once they're down on the desktop, so it means that when you're sitting down, you have to be up a little bit higher to accommodate for the thickness of the overall unit. 
This is a relatively new one to Adelaide on the market. This is the Elevar Quick Shift. I get the quick stand and the quick shift mixed up. Let me just, yeah, quick shift is the Elevar Quick Shift. And it's <coughs> got a smaller footprint and it is uh, quite easy to get up and down. It's a keyboard platform. This is an older variety called a Kangaroo Pro. That's a, a nice solid one, but it has this little leg here that you have to remove and uh, put back in again each time you have it up and down. It's pretty easy to do, but it, and it does make it very solid and it is easy to get up and down, but that's, as I say, each of them have got uh, their pros and cons. This one here I've put in, just to remember that there are low-tech alternatives for standing. This is called a top desk, and all it is is a piece of MDF board with four legs, and the legs are height adjustable, so it's a, it's a fixed height once you've got it there. And it's useful if you want to work at a computer and then maybe do some paperwork at a standing height. And uh, I was also talking to someone else here in the audience who said that they get their maintenance people to make up just a, a hatch that people can do similar sorts of things on. And so that's, they're sort of the basic options and there are a few others on the market. So I guess my take home messages to you all are that we all sit. Everything we do almost involves sitting. Manufacturing has you know, taken a nosedive in South Australia. The, the technology industries are um, more prevalent. The support industries are more prevalent. Sitting is going to be there. It needs, that whole situation needs to be figured out in workplace. I think that there is enough evidence that excessive sitting is uh, detrimental to your health to take it as a given now. You know, it's, I think it's been proven that uh, the more you sit, the more likely you are to have health problems. That we're at the stage of figuring out what are the most practical solutions to these problems? How do we tackle it? What do we do about it? And really, we're looking at dynamic working solutions. And what we're trying to do is encourage people that it is a good idea for them to minimise their time spent in prolonged sitting in particular and to break up that prolonged sitting. And that, as I say, will be a cultural shift in workplaces and the way people manage their own time within the constraints of what they have to do work-wise. And I guess this is the basic message, isn't it? That you stand up, you sit less, you move more and more often. And that's the crux of the whole message. Now, it's just one other thing that I would, that is, yep. This is a little YouTube video, and it's really well worthwhile going back to your computers and having a look at this. So just, it's got the source there, but it's just as easy to Google, let's make our day harder. And it's a very amusing, well put together, three minute little video clip about Every, all of our technology is aimed at making our day easier. And what we really need to do is make our days harder by doing more movement and more sitting. The one that, that gelled with me that I thought was good on this video is that there's a little graphic of someone driving around a, a car park and then parking at the very far end of the car park and that they're parking in the spot that's reserved for those people that want to live longer. Um, so, no, so it, it is a, a very clever little video and it might be useful in your workplaces as well to take part of that uh, sort of cultural shift.